What are you going to be when you grow up? What am I going to be? Well, a large hamster, I suppose. No, silly. I mean, what are you going to do? Well, why didn't you say so? I think I'll be a train driver. Then I can drive Trevor the train. Hello, Trevor! Hello, hamsters. Drive me. Drive me mad, more likely. No, no, I do my own driving, see? Mind you, the other day I drove myself into a spot of trouble. Listen. Trevor and the Ogre. One sunny afternoon, Smokey and I were chugging along, enjoying the views from Magic Mountain. Suddenly, the sky darkened and a huge shadow moved across our path and we were startled by an enormous roar. Standing in our way was a massive ogre. His great face came nearer and nearer. The ogre leant forward and his huge hand picked us up. Then he stamped off towards the dark lands where no one ever goes. Soon, we came to the ogre's dismal hut, where he chained me to a giant millstone, roaring, You'll grind my corn from dusk till dawn. Your back will ache, your wheels may break, but grind the flour to make my cake. Smokey and I dared not disobey. With all my strength, I heaved at the chains and slowly the great millstone moved round, crushing the corn beneath it. I felt that any moment my boiler would explode from the strain. Round and round the track I trudged until nightfall, when the ogre unchained me and locked me in a cage. A little later, when I heard the snores of the ogre, I whispered to Smokey, I can't do this much longer. I wasn't made to pull such a great weight. I'm so frightened and miserable. We must escape. But how? Smokey pointed to a huge pepper pot standing nearby. He had an idea. In the morning, the sleepy ogre came out of his hut, growling and snarling. He unlocked the cage, and before he could chain me to the millstone, Smokey curled himself around the pepper pot and began to spin and whirl. Faster and faster he went, whisking up a large cloud of pepper. Then he blew the pepper up the ogre's nose. The ogre gave out a gigantic sneeze, which shook rain from the clouds. Then he sneezed again, blowing the leaves off the trees. And then again, making the rocks roll and tumble down the mountainside. The ogre fumbled for his handkerchief as Smokey swirled and twisted, whisking up all the pepper. The ogre lunged from side to side, crashing into his hut, sneezing over and over again. At last, he ran off into the distance, still sneezing. We were free of the evil ogre at last, and Smokey and I set off home. I don't think I ought to be a train driver when I grow up, Doris. I might get myself into trouble. I expect you'll get yourself into trouble, whatever you do. Supposing I was a farmer, I wouldn't get into trouble looking after all the cows and sheep and pigs and ducks, would I? I don't know, Morris, but at least you'd have a lovely song to sing. Would I? Yes, of course you would. Old MacDonald. Come on, let's sing it now. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on that farm he had a cow, E-I-E-I-O. With a moo-moo here and a moo-moo there, here a moo, there a moo, everywhere a moo-moo. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. 
Now, what next? Um, what about sheep, Morris? Oh, yes. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on that farm he had some sheep, E-I-E-I-O. With a bar bar here and a bar bar there. Here a bar, there a bar. Everywhere a bar bar. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. Um, did he have any pigs on his farm? Pigs? Oh, yes. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on that farm he had some pigs, E-I-E-I-O. With an oink oink here. And an oink oink there. Here an oink. There an oink. Everywhere a <coughs> Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. Do you think he had any ducks, Maury? Ducks? Oh, yes, I know he did. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O And on that farm he had some ducks, E-I-E-I-O With a quack quack here and a quack quack there Here a quack, there a quack, everywhere a quack quack Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O Quack quack! Oh, what a racket! What exactly do you mean, Trevor? Well, I was just chugging around Magic Mountain when I heard this sort of E-I-E-I-O howling. I, I thought I was going to meet another ogre. That howling was me and Morris singing. Singing? Don't make me laugh. Well, you can talk, Trevor. All you do is go hoot toot toot. Yeah, well, well singing isn't everything, you know, boy. Oh, listen to Carol's story. <laughs> Charlie tries to sing. Charlie Crow was sitting in a tree and trying to sing. Ka ka ka. He went. Ka ka ka. Oh, be quiet, Charlie," said the blackbird who was sitting on the next branch. "That's an awful noise." I'm trying to sing, explained Charlie. What? exclaimed the blackbird. Call that singing. Listen to me. And he lifted his head and warbled. Gosh, that's lovely, said Charlie. I wish I could sing like you. I suppose it's all a matter of practice. Well, practice elsewhere, suggested the blackbird rudely. Charlie flew off to another part of the garden and again tried to sing like the blackbird. Caw, caw, caw. What on earth is that noise? asked a grumpy voice. It's quite deafening. It's only me, Lark, said Charlie. I'm trying to sing. Sing? That noise is singing. I've heard humans do better than that, said the Lark. Listen, and I'll let you hear what singing is. Flapping his wings, he soared into the sky, singing as he went. Charlie was enchanted. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, I wish I could sing. That night, Charlie couldn't sleep for thinking about how he might learn to sing. I'll give it another try, he said to himself. And fluffing up his feathers, he opened his beak. Caw, caw, caw. Goodness gracious, whatever's wrong? asked the nightingale. Are you all right, Charlie? I'm trying to sing, explained Charlie. Can you teach me? Just copy me. Try this. Charlie tried to imitate him, but all he could do was... Caw, caw, caw. No, 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 like this. Charlie took a deep breath. <gasps> caw, 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 he went. It's no good, sighed the nightingale. I don't think you'll ever learn to sing. Charlie felt very sad. All next day he sat on his branch and hung his head. All around him the birds were singing. Suddenly... 
Charlie saw something dark and furry creeping along under the bushes. In a flash, he realised the danger. Cat, he said to himself. There's a cat in the garden. But the other birds went on singing. They were too busy to notice. Charlie stood up on his branch and called as loudly as he could over and over again. Cat! Caw! 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 Cat! In a flash, the birds had stopped their singing and flown high up onto the telegraph wires, out of reach of the cat. Thank goodness we're safe, chattered the blackbirds. I never noticed the cat, did you? chirruped a sparrow. We were all too busy singing, said the lark. If it hadn't been for Charlie's warning, we would have been caught. Yes, we all heard you loud and clear, said the blackbird. Your voice is perfect for warning us of danger. Please don't change it said the lark. We need you the way you are. Charlie felt very proud and useful. It didn't matter if he couldn't sing. It was more important that he could warn the other birds of danger. Caw! 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 Doris, I still haven't decided what I'm going to be when I grow up. Oh, Morris, I expect you'll be a large hamster. Oh, ha, ha. I think I'll probably be king of Magic Mountain. In that case, Dilly Dilly, I shall be queen. Dilly Dilly, what do you mean, Dilly Dilly? Don't you know the song Lavender's Blue? No. Stephen does. Lavender's blue, dilly dilly, lavender's green When I am king, dilly dilly, you shall be queen Call up your men, dilly dilly, set them to work Some to the plow, dilly dilly, some to the cart Some to make hay, dilly dilly, some to cut corn While you and I, dilly dilly, keep ourselves warm Lavender's green, dilly dilly, lavender's blue If you love me, dilly dilly, I will love you Lavender's blue, dilly dilly, lavender's green When I am king, dilly dilly, you shall be queen Lavender's green, dilly dilly, lavender's blue If you love me, dilly dilly, I will love you By side, fished from a bridge by the banks of the Clyde. The first caught a tiddler, the second caught a crab, the third caught a winkle, the fourth caught a dab, the fifth caught a tadpole, the sixth caught an eel, but the seventh he caught an old cartwheel. Seven fat fishermen sitting side by side, fished from a bridge by the banks of the Clyde. Maybe I could be a fisherman when I grow up. I bet you'd always be catching cartwheels or old boots. No, I wouldn't. I'm magic. Well, maybe you'd catch magic boots. There's no such thing as magic boots. Oh, yes, there is. Listen to Nigel's story. The Elves and the Shoemaker. All his life, Ollie the shoemaker work, work, worked. He made good, strong shoes and sold them to the people who passed by his little shop in the high street. But Ollie was old. His eyes were tired. His hands were stiff. He could not work fast anymore. So 
he earned very little money. Soon he was too poor to buy more leather to make shoes. Oh, dear, he said to his wife, Molly. I have only one piece of leather left. I'll only be able to make one more pair of shoes. Whatever will become of us? It's not fair, said Molly. You work so hard. That night, Ollie left the last piece of leather on the table and went to bed. In the morning, what do you think he found? Molly! Molly! Come and see! There on the table was a pair of shoes. And what shoes? Look at the tiny stitches, cried Ollie. Look at the tiny nails, cried Molly. Ollie put the shoes in his window. A duke who was passing bought them for a lot of money. Ollie took the money and bought a big piece of leather. And that night he left it on his table and went to bed. Next morning, Wonder of wonders! There were two pairs of shiny riding boots on the table. Who made them? cried Ollie. Who is being so kind to us? said Molly. Ollie sold the two pairs of boots and bought still more leather. And every night, someone sewed the leather into shoes and boots and slippers. What shoes! What boots! What slippers! cried the people who passed by. Ollie sells the best shoes in town. Ollie and Molly grew rich, but still they could not guess who was helping them. Tonight we'll keep watch, said Molly. So they hid behind the big clock in the shop and watched. Just before midnight, out from under a loose floorboard, crept six little elves. The elves climbed up onto the table. They cut the leather. Snip, snip, snip. They sewed the tops to the soles. Stitch, stitch, stitch. And they nailed on the heels. Tap, tap, tap. But every now and then they stopped and danced about to keep warm. Oh, the poor little mites haven't got any clothes, whispered Molly. The elves worked all night. When all the leather was used up, they jumped down from the table. Come on, time to go. Back to bed now. <sighs> Let's get warm. Ooh, it's so chilly. The six little elves hopped back down beneath the floorboard. Ollie put all the new shoes in the shop window. Molly got out her sewing basket. What are you doing, dear? said Ollie. Tomorrow is Christmas Eve. I mean to give those little lads the Christmas presents they deserve. Molly sewed six coats, six caps, and six pairs of trousers. And that night, she laid out the tiny clothes on the table beside Ollie's shoe leather. And again, Ollie and Molly hid behind the big clock. Just before midnight, the floorboard lifted and out crept the six elves. They could hardly climb up onto the table, they were shivering so much. How untidy Ollie is getting, said one of the elves. Oh, look at all these clothes lying about. Move them or we can't start work, said another. Wait a bit. They're too small for Ollie and Molly, said a third. I do believe they're for us. <laughs> then he found the note pinned to one of the little caps. It said, thank you for everything. Happy Christmas. The six little elves pulled on the clothes, laughing with delight. They buttoned each other's jackets and straightened each other's caps. Then they leapt down and danced to the shop door. Out we go, they sang, smart and warm, just like gentlemen. And they all danced off down the street. The church bells were ringing to say that it was Christmas. The elves never came back, but then Ollie and Molly never needed to make more shoes. They were very rich. 
They would sit all day by the door, watching the people go by. In the shoes and boots and slippers, Ollie and the elves had made. Perhaps you'll be a shoemaker when you grow up, Morris. Perhaps I won't. Perhaps I'll be something really exciting, like, like a man from outer space. Perhaps is a good word. Is it? Why? Because it's the title of our rhyme. <laughs> rhyme time! Yes. Hooray! Perhaps. What will you be when you grow up, people always say? Perhaps we'll never grow up at all and always, always play. Perhaps I'll be a doctor and visit you when you're ill. Perhaps I'll be a footballer with lots and lots of skill. Perhaps I'll be a baker, baking loaves of bread. Perhaps I'll be a cowboy or an Indian instead. Perhaps I'll have a garage for mending broken cars. Perhaps I'll be an astronaut and have a home on Mars. Perhaps we'll never grow up at all and always, always play and pretend to be a different person every single day. Doris, do you love me? Of course I do, Morris. You're my brother. Oh, good. Thanks, Doris. Why do you ask? Because I've just dropped your pencil box on the floor and your favourite red pencil is broken. Oh, Morris, you clumsy hamster. That's my very best. Oh, how could you be so clumsy? Oh, don't cry, Doris. Being clumsy isn't always bad. Listen to Stephen's story. Stephen's story? Oh, I feel better already. The Clumsy Elephant. One day, Melba the little elephant was walking through the jungle to meet her granddad at the big tree. Grandad was very wise. He was teaching Melba all the things she needed to know about the jungle. As Melba passed the river, she bumped against a rock, which rolled down the bank and onto Crocodile's nose. Shove off, you clumsy little elephant, he snapped. I am sorry, Crocodile, said Melba politely, and she hurried on to meet her granddad. Sitting in a truck not far away were two wicked hunters called Arthur and Ethel. We must look in our animal trap at the big tree, said Ethel. I hope it has trapped that granddad elephant with the big tusks, said Arthur. Suddenly their truck screeched to a halt, just missing Melba. Watch where you're going, you clumsy little elephant, shouted Arthur. I am sorry, said Melba. I'm in a hurry to meet my granddad at the big tree. Who? said Arthur and Ethel. If you'll show us the way, we'll give you a lift. Oh, thank you, said Melba. And thinking she had found two friends, she guided the wicked hunters through the jungle. <laughs> Soon they arrived at the big tree, but Grandad was not there. Melba was very disappointed. I do hope he comes soon, she said, and climbed out of the truck. But her foot got caught on the bumper, and she toppled the truck over. The hunters were thrown into the air and fell down a hole. Just then, Grandad came crashing through the jungle. Melba! He shouted, Grandad, oh, Grandad, cried Melba, and she tried to explain how her two friends had fallen down the hole. Wise old Grandad took one look at the hole and trumpeted, Those people are not your friends. That hole is an elephant trap. Then who are they? asked Melba. They're horrid hunters, said Grandad angrily. They want to trap us and chop off our tusks to make jewellery. Poor Melba was very frightened. Let's go, said Grandad. These nasty hunters can find their own way out of their trap. Grandad and Melba disappeared into the jungle. Later, Grandad told the other animals how Melba had caught the hunters in their own trap. They all roared with laughter. <laughs> well done, 
Captain Milba, chuckled Crocodile. Sometimes we don't mind how clumsy you are. sure you love me, Doris? Yes, Maurice, I'm quite sure I love you. Even though I broke your red pencil? Even though you broke my red pencil. And even though I tease you? Even though you teased me. In that case, your boo sucks! Maurice, come back here! No! Come back here! Why? Because it's time to sing. All right, here I am. Let's sing London Bridge is Falling Down. Ready? London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. Build it up with stones so strong, stones so strong, stones so strong. Build it up with stones so strong, my fair lady. It will last for ages long, ages long, ages long. It will last for ages long, my fair lady. London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Be back Goodbye. soon. Goodbye. Goodbye.